In this video, we will be going over how to graph absolute functions. Recall that parent function of an absolute function is y equals the absolute value of x. And the vertex of the graph is very similar to the vertex of the standard form for quadratic function, which is h comma k. And the general form for the absolute function is y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. And one of your goals was to figure out what is the purpose of the a value. As you went through the exercises, you should have noticed that the absolute value of a is the slope of the function. And same as a quadratic function, if a is positive, it's facing upwards. If a is less than zero, then it is facing downwards. And if a is between zero and one, meaning it's like a fraction, then the graph is very wide. Wide means that it's going to be really big. And if a is greater than one, meaning like two, uh, three and a half, then we will notice that the graph is narrow. Now to graph your absolute function, the first step you want to take was to identify the vertex. After you identify the vertex, so using the x value, which is h, you would add or subtract two values. And then you will be able to create a table off of it. And you will graph these points by creating a v-shape. So our practice problem that we're going to go over in this video was y equals 4 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 2. Notice that the a is 4. And because it's 4, we know this is greater than 1. We know this is going to be a very narrow graph. And we know the h and the k is 1 and negative 2. So we know our vertex is 1, negative 2. Now what if you forgot? All you need to do is get the value in the absolute value and set it equal to 0. So if you set x minus 1 equal to 0, we get x equals 1. Same thing, this is our axis of symmetry, and you plug it in, and you'll get y is equal to negative 2, which is k. So what you want to do now is using this value, you're going to create a t-chart. And you're going to plug in values as 2 before 1, which is 0, and negative 1, and 2 values after 1, which is 2 and 3. Then you plug it into the original function, which is 4, absolute value of x minus 1 minus 2. So for example, if we plug in negative 1, we'll get 4 times absolute value of negative 2 minus 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, and then we get 8 minus 2, which is 6. To solve for our next point, now plug in 0 for x, so 4 times 0 minus 1 minus 2. Simplify. Remember, absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Get 2. Then you'll plug in 2 for x. 4 times 2 minus 1 is 2. That's 4 times 1. Absolute value of 1 minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. And if you plug in 3, you'll get 6. Notice that it's very similar to a quadratic function where, th where it's going to be a reflection of each other, meaning that it will be the same point. Then you graph it. So negative 1, 6, right here. 0, 2, 1, negative 2, 2, 2, 3, 6. Remember, this is an absolute function, meaning that it's going to be a V-shape. Just connect the point. And ta-da, you get your absolute function. Now, let's bring back the A value. Our A value is 4. And remember, we know that the absolute value of A is the slope. So let's look at the line here. Remember, slope is rise over 1. And if we go from the point here and go up to here, Notice that we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4. So our rise is 4. And our run is 1. So as a confirmation, our slope is in fact 4. And if we look at the other line, notice we go down negative 4 and write 1. And if you take the absolute value of this, it is still 4. 
So this is how everything ties back together. Use these tips to help you graph the absolute functions. Remember that absolute function and quadratic functions are very similar, except absolute functions create a V-shape, whereas quadratic functions create a U-shape graph.